Welcome to Plant Based TV, a program made just for you about the world of plants. But it's not just that, this is about the wider world of plants too. So gardening tips and tricks, plant-based diets and plant-based clothing. It's a program made by people that love plants. For people that love plants. Coming up on the show later, we introduce some funky plants for your garden pots and containers. And we visit Ellen's allotment and chat to a few of the locals. So what's better, colour or crops? Ellen and I are about to have a plant off. And you get to decide who wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ellen's going for all vegetables, which are all going to be a bit green and boring, but I'm just going to celebrate with a massive colour and fragrance. I know that Michael is going to go all flamboyant colour, but I think that edibles can look just as amazing with all the textures and foliage and that lovely different shades of green. So I'm going to pick loads of kind of salads, everything that we can grow inside the veggie pod, and I'm going to create my own mini allotment. Right, Michael. <laughs> I'm ready. I've pre-selected. Yeah, you with all of your colourful We're plants. We're going to be full on colour. It's going to be great for the bees, the butterflies, the beneficial insects. It might yeah. even help you out in your veg patch. Absolutely exactly. true. That is such a good idea. And I was I looking at that always stopping. Thinking, always I was thinking, caring. what about all this colour? What about all of my green edibles that we can all take home organically mm. grown? But actually, we need these in order for I them know, to I know, of so. course. So let's start up. First of all, I'm going to plant some petunias, purely because I love them and they're beautiful. Look at these, there's a heart in every single petal as well. Aww. It's amazing, it's called Queen of Hearts. Colours yeah. are really, really nice. When you plant edibles, they can look so good. You know, all the textures, mm. all the foliage, they don't have to look really boring. I'm actually really trying to think about what I plant where. So I want this to be kind of like a mini allotment. Yeah. And so I'm planting my spring onions next to the carrots. Uh -huh. Because that can really help deter carrot root fly. Okay. They don't like the smell of spring onions or anything mm -hmm. oniony really. So if you plant them next to your carrots, it could really help. We're planting into the veggie pod, which is like a raised allotment, isn't it? So it's almost like an allotment at waist height. It is. It's good for my old back. I think I'm over your boundary here, sorry, love. Yeah, well, if you come over mm. my boundary, I'm just going to cut it back. <laughs> <laughs> so you be careful. So with my sudden change of heart, I'm actually not going all orange and yellow, but I'm going to create a bit of a pride border. Cool. The inclusivity, Ellen. That's Look. really cool. Right, I've got a tray of microgreens here. Hey, cool. Obviously, you would usually just sow them direct. Mm -hmm. And I've been growing these in the tray okay. in the greenhouse. But I'm going to attempt to transplant some of these into here. Because mm -hmm. I think it shows the kind of thing that you can grow in the veggie pot, mm. you know? Yeah. And microgreens are just too good. You mm -hmm. know, they're so easy. You sow loads of them. You don't even need the best compost. Mm -hmm. And you let them get to about 10 centimetres if that, and then you cut them. Okay. You use them soup, salad, stews, And this, um, the goodness is more concentrated more, at that size as absolutely. well, isn't it? This is my pride garden. Do you like it? It's coming like red and yellow and pink and To be green. honest, There's I green. didn't want to like it. <laughs> yeah? I didn't want to like it, because mm. I wanted mine to obviously be way better yeah. than yours. But I love it. Excellent, thank you. Uh, excuse cool. me, and mine. Yeah, I like yours. I like yours. Love a lot. it or nope. like it? You got the chilies, big banana chilies, got all these nice spicy salad ingredients, which yeah, far beat mustard. anything you'd buy in the supermarkets. Awesome. Yeah, I will actually. This is a nice and spicy mix, isn't it? It is. I think. Yeah. yeah. They'll be sort of mustardy, mm. spicy mustardy. Carrots as well, so golf ball carrots, so you don't need much space to grow those. Yep. Got your Lola Rosso. 
Ace. Lovely yeah. textures and colours. Like yeah. it. We're good. And then sew to bed. <laughs> Here comes the protection. This is the true meaning of bedding plants, Ellen. <laughs> <laughs> Putting them to bed. Oh. And there we go. Look at that. Yeah, so Easy to access. Extra protection for those early crops and also allows you to keep insects away too. It does, absolutely. And there's the water as well. So the yeah. water system. So uh, automatic watering all yeah. summer long. Super good. <laughs> I'm happy. But who wins? Yeah. You decide. So we hope you've casted your vote in the plant off. Now, are you ready for some allotment based fitness? What have you got ready to harvest today, Alan? Oh, I've got so many potatoes. King Edward potatoes, they are oh, so nice. yummy. Had some mashed potato with those. <gasps> Big courgettes. Oh, oh, I think Hedge will find a use for all of those. I do as well. Runner beans, I'm oh, going to have a glut of those. What the hell's a glut? <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna find out. Hi, I'm Paul, better known as Hench Herbivore Online. My muscles are made 100% from plants, and I'm here to put these guys through their paces at the allotment games. Station one is fork digging. We're going to do 10 reps of that. Then on to the tunnels, over, under, over. 10 courgette curls, the 10 watering can squats. We're going to do 10 side lateral raises. We're going to do patty pan put. And the last station is the compost carry. We're going to do that for 50 meters. Okay, guys, get ready to fork off. Three, two, one, go, come on, 10 reps, let's go. Tunnels, over, under, now don't knock these over, Michael. Shoulders down, bum down, get that bum down, man, come on. Alan's catching your head, she's like a slippery snake. Look at that, beautiful. Oh, Alan's flying, I think those are a little bit lighter. <laughs> One, that's it. Keep your chest nice and upright for this. Nice. I don't want to see you guys tipping it out and making it lighter. Ten reps. Oh, nice. I Alan's <laughs> cheating. Stop, but let's go. Come on, as far as you can, let's go. <laughs> okay, grab the bags. Okay, now go. Go, 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 go. Oh. He threw it at the end before he crossed the line. Hmm. Yeah. Okay guys, so it was a great it's a great time, it's two o'clock exactly. Um, now Michael, you crossed the line first, but you did launch the bag, meaning that you had a lighter load, so oh. I'm afraid I'm gonna have to disqualify you. <laughs> Helen, <laughs> 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 I'm honoured to award you this Marigold Medal as the winner of the inaugural Allotment Games. Yay! Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to do a speech, <laughs> but I won't. Um, to be fair, this is like the first time I've ever been taller than you, Michael. Hmm, enjoy it while it lasts. Uh-huh. Oh. Shall we go home? I'll make you a frittata for tea. Of course, yeah. <laughs> Keep watching as we take a look at my houseplant collection and find out which houseplants are perfect for a sunny spot. We've got some plants for beginners here because these are plants that are for your brightly lit rooms. There's cacti and succulents which store a lot of their own moisture. So actually, they need minimal care. And yeah. I love that they look so amazing and They're futuristic. Fabulous. I barely touch these plants. <laughs> barely touch them. Actually, well, I wouldn't touch that one because you know what? That's, it's covered in babies. They've got tiny little plants. They're mother of thousands. Yeah. 
um, or Mexican hat plant, lots of different names. Along the leaf edges, Hello. <laughs> they produce these tiny little plantlets. And literally, there are thousands of them. This, this one has been producing plantlets for a good six months. Oh. And I've taken them off and I've sent them to friends. I've even sent them to people on Instagram who've asked for some, and it's still producing plantlets. Oh. It's quite incredible. And you literally take those tiny little plants and pop them in some soil and it's a cool plant. And very often they've got roots ready to go when they get a bit older. You can see on some of those. Yeah. They'll root anywhere though, won't they? Anywhere, so you've got in to be... anything. <laughs> You'll see it's like, like an plant. indoor weed. They're like, like an indoor <laughs> weed. Yeah, you, actually, if you stand this kind of like on a shelf above a radiator or something, you look down, they're all down the back of the radiator on the floor. Um, but they if are. If you've really got really... dirty carpets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, when you've got 150 yeah. house plants, <laughs> you know. Um, there's, these can actually flower as well. So I gave one to my yeah. mum, and it, blew, it, it, was, it looked like an alien. It was insane. Yeah. yeah quite incredible. But okay. yeah, they're really good plants. Easy, easy peasy to grow. That's cool. It's, it's crazy because actually in the wild and in different parts of Asia, they can grow like to be real pest. Right. So people would almost look at that as kind of like, you know, how we look at dandelions or okay. mare's tail. Dandelion so it's, is it's not weird, a weed. It's weird, isn't it? Dandelion no, is an true, amazing plant. Yeah. But it's weird that something in another country in a different context can be invasive. Yeah. Whereas here, it's something we cherish. Yeah, isn't it? totally. So you've got cactus at the front. So yeah. cacti obviously holding the moisture, protect themselves in the wild with those spines. Yeah doesn't need much water at all, I does it? I pretty much forget to water yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know yeah. when it gets water, Well, it's storing so much in there, isn't it? Very so. little water uh, needed. And then this one. What's that little baby? Aeolia. So somebody gifted this to me, actually, oh. and it's grown really tall, and it's great, and I love it. It has little <laughs> water requirements. Um, however, the one thing about it, so you can do it now, actually, take away the leaves that are kind of all mm -hmm. over underneath, and then smell your hands. Really? Yeah. Thing. So these are the dead they're, leaves, they're the obviously, dead leaves natural that will, to take those away. Yeah, they need to be removed. Oh my god! <laughs> what is that? It's like an armpit. It's disgusting. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh. That is horrible, isn't it? Oh, it is like the so wrong awful. type of tapas dish. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. But this is um, a cool part because uh, you can use it inside or outside as well. So yeah, if you're yeah. making up a summer tropical border, yeah. urban jungle thing, yeah. then you can use that. I've seen some beautiful Aeonium. ones outside, like grand houses on mm. the doorway, like down the steps. Are absolutely oh, wonderful. Cool. Really, really cool. Yeah. And we've got some medicine here. It's like opening your medicine cupboard. What have yeah. we got here? One of my favourites, aloe a off, vera. Yeah. Break a bit yeah. off. You're welcome. Right, cool. I mean, aloe vera is absolutely incredible. Everybody should have an aloe vera. Really easy to grow. These lovely fleshy leaves are full of like a gel. Mm -hmm. it, it stores all the water. Skin, isn't it? You barely need to water it at all. It needs some light. It's brilliant for your skin. I hope you don't come out in a rash or something now. <laughs> I'm always up no. for experiments, Ellen. You, you know me. Um, test it first, but aloe vera is super, super safe. So it's great for your skin. It's really great for your hair. You should like Cheryl Cole you now should, on the L'Oreal advert or something. Because I'm worth it. Oh, is that L'Oreal? I don't know. Um, and you, if you have it in the kitchen, it's great for burns. So if you burn yourself when you're cooking, you just rub mm -hmm. a little bit of that gel. <laughs> With your inside. cooking, you would. <laughs> My cooking is not but, but. great. Um, the, this lovely gel inside is what you need to do. And actually, if you mm. get a knife or like a sharp nail and just scrape, kind of cut through the outer leaf like that, mm -hmm. all you need to do is then scrape out oh, that yeah. gel and you can put that into a pot and just put it into the fridge and it will oh. last probably about three to five days. But if you were to burn yourself or have an insect bite or a cut or anything like mm -hmm. that, you just rub it on. Brilliant. Oh. Can you eat this as well? Because you get eat this in it. drinks. Yep, too, you can don't eat you? it. Yeah, aloe vera, you can buy aloe vera so drinks. So add it to a smoothie. Uh, I know, well. yeah, you can add it to smoothies. I know someone who has basically like a little shot glass, if you like, of this every single morning. Really? Yeah, it's like, so jelly -like. Cleopatra is rumoured to be the most beautiful woman in the whole world and she used to use aloe vera avocado and olive oil, mix it all up and put it on her face as a face mask. Mm, it's so jelly-like, it's like yeah, it's like jelly. jelly. Yeah, it's like jelly, yeah. You've got kind of yellow gunge all over your face now. What? Yeah, from the aloe vera. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you it's know. To have an experiment, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so anyway. Okay, I need to rub in a bit more. House plants are varied, they are vast, you can all you, what you need to do is just check that you're getting the right plant for the right situation, just the same as outside. Yeah, so right plant, right room. There's some really good guides on the internet. Also, 
you know, follow various people on Instagram yeah. because it can be so inspiring. You can also see what the latest cool plant that everybody is grabbing is as yeah. well. Perhaps even share cuttings with them yeah. too because it's there's brilliant. a nice community behind it all. Absolutely. It? So really? yeah, there you go. That, Super. That's the kitchen jungle. <laughs> <laughs> and it's quite easy to maintain. But then what about when you go on holiday? You need a really good plant sitter, don't you? You need a good plant Me? sitter, yeah. Well, you haven't done it yet. No, but I'd be good at it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you would be great at it. You're very welcome. Um, but I've got some lovely friends who come and help sometimes as well. But there are things you can do. I can always remember my parents putting their house plants in the bath mm -hmm. and then filling the bath up so they're kind of sitting in some water. Oh. The ones that needed the water. Or that kind of capillary matting thing where you put a Brilliant. Um, sink of water, a tea yeah. towel, and then it kind of sucks it up yeah. through the tea towel yeah. because then you place the plants on the draining board yeah. on this moist That's right. tea towel. I have seen Pretty some cool. photographs doing the rounds on social media where they've done that but with a piece of string. The mm -hmm. string isn't enough. Mm. The string is, is not, you know, there's not going to be enough water for that string mm -hmm. to water the plant so you do need something to collide like okay. a tea towel or something much more um, but yeah that's a really good way of doing it as well so yeah cool. excellent nice. excellent tips thank you ellen <laughs> Total pleasure. but i do think your kitchen needs a bit of a living wall we'll fix one up over there later yeah, well, there's quite a few things living up there <laughs> do you want your garden to be the height of fashion then we've got the container guide for you we are now going to put up two really cool, trendy pots. Outside pots. One's gonna be lovely with like color pops of blues and silvers, and another one's gonna be full of outdoor succulents. That's right, so container number one is gonna be the height of fashion because blues, mauve, silvers have been tipped as being the colors for next season, 2020. So we're gonna start up by making a color container complete with those blues, silvers. We're even using a blue container here today, aren't we, as well? With our blue and silver I know. clothes We've on. We've even dressed for the occasion. <laughs> so what we're going to do, this is your pot that you're going to plant up, Ellen. This is my pot. So how are we going to do that? Well, first things first, of yeah. course, we need drainage holes. Mm -hmm. So there are drainage holes already in this pot. They're there, good to go. You can okay. put some grit in the bottom of your pots, mm -hmm. if you like, before you put your soil in, can't you? Some people use those packaging chips as well. OK. That's pretty cool, good way to recycle stuff. But anyway, mm -hmm. or some crocs in the bottom, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. You can also place it up on feet in wintertime. Because so, without drainage, you're going to yeah. get waterlogging at the and bottom. And it's not good. And none of these plants like wet feet. No. Hardly any plants like to have wet They're feet. Actually. Rot away. So yeah. um, drainage is so important. So we're going to fill it up with our compost. We are. A good quality multi-purpose compost, preferably peat free as well. So we're going <laughs> to fill the pot probably about two thirds full before we start putting our plants in. Absolutely, and it always um, really gives you the benefit to invest the most you can in a good compost because it will retain that moisture yeah. that much more and also have the nutrients that your plants need to start off as well. Yeah. This is going to be our container mix which is the height of fashion. So this is blues, silvers and those kind of more subdued colours that are kind of a real nice pastel Love kind them. of blue and purple mixes too. So. What we've got here, first of all, is a salvia yeah. farinacea, yeah. which is kind of like an annual type salvia. So what we're actually creating here is like a short term container. So we don't want this to look good for like four no. or five months of the year. Absolutely. We're just looking for four to five weeks of color. This is like living flower arranging. Yeah, I believe this is Sally Fun. Salvia yep. Sally Fun. Yeah. And it does look quite fun. It is. Does it have that salvia smell? It smells a bit like sweets. It does a bit. It's kind it of smells like, sweet. Yeah. Mm, I'm not nice. sure I'd buy that candle. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so okay, next up, go. because we're looking at a kind of like a late summer container here, but we're doing it as a kind of very um, kind of current mixture. So next we're dealing with some cyclamens. Yeah. And again, cyclamens like to be a little bit on the dry side. So we're planting a few plants in here that don't like to be that wet. So it's actually slightly lower maintenance as well. Yeah, fabulous. That's so. really lovely. I love the pinks with the blues, really pretty. Ah, uh, yeah, so yeah, so you've got silver, a little bit of pink, a little bit of blue. It's all going on here. Really nice, love that. I love cyclamens and of course like the reds and everything as well mm. that you can have, but this colour scheme's gorgeous. So next up we've got a real blue here, <coughs> we've got Festuca mm. Glauca. This Isn't reminds me of Christmas. Yeah, why? Well, because the colours, like all, like I know this like late yeah. summer, but you get those kind of silvery blues at yeah, Christmas true. time. It reminds me of that. It's almost a Christmas decoration. <laughs> <Always>. <laughs> but these are really great plants because they're just little clump forming plants. They've got this nice steely blue 
colour to the leaves. And in the summer, they often give you a little golden flower as well. So we're going to pop those into our container, which is kind of like a, like a bleached coral theme. So it's very kind of aqua. Aquamarine, we could call this, couldn't we? What have we got next? These yeah. are gorgeous. I love so these. This is Calisophallus, Silvery. which has only just become popular as a kind of bedding filler. Like when I was a kid, we only had the choice as a filler of things like Bacopa, Bidens, Napita, the trailing one. Yeah. Which and those things like to me they look yeah. a bit passe now. We've got a lot more choices that look we can use that. alongside those as well. So this is Calisophallus. It's silvery. Oh, See what I mean when I said like it Christmasy. Looks like coral itself, it does it? look a bit like coral. Yeah. It is Christmassy. Really nice look, but I believe in really packing plants into containers. So kind of yeah. filling all of those spaces because this is living flower arranging. We only want this container to look good for perhaps four to five weeks. So it's a very different style of planting where you can change it up from time to time. Yeah, love that. That's nice. I love the, the way you've done the kind of circular yeah, look Yeah, I kind of figured I'd put really the bigger, nice. taller one in the middle. It's you really know, symmetrical. Just, I well, like that style. That's my style. Yeah. Gardening, I think, as well. <laughs> I always try to go a little bit out of the box and do things not so formal yeah. or symmetrical, but always end up being symmetrical anyway. So. <laughs> that's cute. So we've got a couple of echeverias here. Now these wouldn't be hardy over the winter, so these are great for our short-term container that we're making here today. And we've got two different varieties, slightly different looks, but again, that yeah. silvery blue, steely appearance Look too. Look at that. And that's fabulous, isn't I know. it? It's about to flower, but the flower stopper. is going to be a bit off off topic because it's probably going to be a bit of an orange and yellow flower. Oh, I don't it's going mind to ruin a colour clash. No? I love a colour clash. I might cut it off. Th no, you will not. <laughs> There's nothing like a little colour pop. Why uh, not? And then we've got another Echeveria here. So remember, these like really, really Thank good you. drainage. So that's why it's great that we've created drainage at the bottom and we've used a good free draining compost as well. Absolutely. And don't forget that going forward, if you're keeping your plants in containers, you're going to need to feed them. You're going to need to water them. Um, especially in the summertime, containers mm. dry out so quickly. And so rainfall doesn't always no. get into the container because no. look at all that canopy of foliage. Exactly. So you need to water them just through the side or even better from the bottom through a saucer then the container takes up just yeah. what it needs exactly. as well. Exactly and if you are yeah. growing perennials and you're keeping your pot as it is you need to feed it with mm -hmm. a really good plant food as well. So yeah there we go look at that. That's perfect well what do you think? There's one I planted earlier how do we compare? Mm. So, so look, this is Ellen's all the way around, but with mine, don't look at the back. <laughs> <laughs> it looks lovely. Built for that way. It looks lovely. I know, and I love that we, it's a little bit different to normal. Usually you'd be planting into a kind of traditional terracotta coloured container. Yeah. But here, these coloured containers, you may have seen them in the DIY store before and thought, hmm, I don't know if they're for me, but when you choose the right plants, yeah. look at the effect you can get. Yeah, it looks fabulous, doesn't yeah. it? Beautiful. Good work. Do you ever wonder who else hangs out down the plot? Then stay tuned to meet my allotment neighbours who give us an insight into allotmenteering. I'm now in my allotment neighbours awesome polytunnel. <laughs> it's so brilliant. And this is Mary. So uh, Mary, I moved in next door to you yes. last year, didn't I? Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky me, looking at this as well. You've been an ace allotment neighbour already. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I just want to find out from you, how did you start gardening in the first place? When did it all begin? Well, I'm quite old. I'm nearly 70. I That's not old. Okay. Well, no, it's not old in gardening terms. Anyway, <laughs> the point is, I started gardening, I feel like I've gardened all my life because I started gardening probably as soon as I could. Certainly, I wasn't as old as five, really. Wow. I lived in the country, in Norfolk, in a village, and uh, we had a big gar flower garden, front and back, and we had an allotment. So my father, who'd come from Paisley, a very inner city place, just loved the countryside. He married my mum, who was from Norfolk, and um, so he got into gardening. He learnt the hard way, you know. <laughs> the best way. Yes, but he had, an, and he loved it. And of course, at that time, when I was young, in the, in the early 50s, um, there was still rationing, so it was really important to grow. So my mum did the flowers and the fruit, he did the vegetables, and I pitched in. And interestingly, I was just saying to my friend Tracy here that, um, by the time when I was even in my teens, which is probably unusual in a way, maybe not now, I um, 
I asked my dad if actually I could have quite a large bit of the garden, probably the equivalent of allotments worth, so that I could do have my own vegetable space because I was really getting into vegetables, always been into flowers. And the other thing about growing is that all of us of that time had Brook Bond tea cards and we all learnt about wildflowers. Really? Had all of them. They were wonder absolutely wonderful. So I knew every flat wildflower that was going. Still do, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, not not for, uh, in other environments, you know, habitats, but um, certainly Norfolk ones. Um, and so I was just always really interested in gardening. So right gardening. from the very beginning? From the very beginning. Uh, what was really yeah. interesting, just something you said super quickly, yes. is you said that as a teen you thought maybe it was weird then that yes, you wanted to grow but that's the same now I think. Is it? Because nobody else wanted to but that didn't bother me because I just loved it and and what was interesting was when I went to high school um, I was fortunate enough I actually went to a boarding school but the the boarding school actually had a, um, a, a garden a school garden and uh, they let me actually work in it brilliant and so for cooking I'd cook like you know do rhubarb crumble and I'd go and get the rhubarb so you see it was That's all brilliant. everything was very connected so I've always been interested in plants when I first moved to Norwich, which was in the 1970s, we had a small terrace and it just had a courtyard. So I then had an allotment on this site, uh, which wasn't this one. Um, but then fortunately, what we were looking for was um, a house with a large garden, which is what we have now in Norwich, which to begin with, I could grow vegetables in, uh, flowers, of course. Um, but then gradually all the trees were growing up and the roots were coming in and it was unsuitable. So then I got this one, which was about 12, 13 years ago. Do you love it? I love every minute of it. I love every minute of it, but it's not just about growing, which I love. Uh, it's about um, much, much more than that. It's, uh, well, it's about healthy food. So that's really important to me because I'm, I do eat fish, but I mainly eat vegetables, so that's important. You grow the varieties you want, you pick them straight here and they go straight home and there is no comparison whatsoever. Um, I can make whole meals out of things that are on my plot, which is amazing. Um, it's the community on allotment is just second to none. Uh, I've not been well and wherever I go, people are stopping me and asking me. When I was seriously not well, people were queuing up to water my plot and to weed and to do things. It's, it's just fantastic. And uh, I would imagine it's like that in most in most gardening communities. Yeah. It's, there's something really special about it. There is, it's, I completely agree. Because I think if you're someone who loves plants and this sort of thing, there's a nurturing thing. So people have that in them, that nurturing way of thinking. Couldn't agree. More. So, you know, I think it's great. So, um, you know, a lot of the, we, we were just talking about, dear Tracy said, what sort of people come up here? And it is a mixed bag. She was wondering if most of them retired and they're not. It goes through phases, but I would say half are retired and, you know, it's something nice and calm to do. Some people come up here because they're lonely. Yeah. And that is and they want the to reason. Be included in the they community. want to be included in the community. They're not really coming, but then they get into the gardening in this sort of smallish way. Uh, some people come up here because they have small gardens and they can actually have a climbing frame up here. They can have a little uh, lawn up here, and you know, they ch and then the children get involved in it, which is fantastic. So um, many reasons. There's just loads of reasons, you know. So it's great, and we all mix in, and we all help each other and share. That's yeah, the that's really important. all about you know, sharing. Yes, because we do that, don't we? We do. We your raspberries are the nicest <laughs> raspberries ever. <laughs> so that's all good. So everything's positive about yeah. an allotment. There's just nothing negative whatsoever. Yeah, that's right. Do you have any allotment gossip though? Uh, What's the gossip on the plot? What are your neighbours uh, like? They are a mixed bag. They really are. A mixed a mi bag of or, lettuce leaves. Or a mixed bunch, yeah. They are, they are. They are really, because they're all quite different. And, you know, we'll all have a little moans and groans about weeds coming over and this and that and all the rest of it. But by and large, they're, they're really interesting and we look after each other. So I don't, um, oh, you know, we all have a kind of a love-hate relationship with the allotment officer because sometimes <laughs> they don't let us do what we'd like to do or yes. you know they, they've got a very busy job to do so that's a bit hard but um, no it's uh, it's all good it's all good it's really positive and that's the great thing isn't it it keeps you calm mm. it keeps you relaxed even though it's hard work because that's the other thing we didn't even talk about it keeps you fit yeah 
so physical you, exercise, so keeping you moving. I know lots of people up here who are well into their 80s and they're still riding bikes and they're doing all That's their right. plots and their plots at least as big as mine. Yeah. So Amazing, really. It's I've fantastic. got to just say, the best thing is you've got a tiny little spider hanging oh off your hand. As I'm chatting with you, <laughs> here's a hat coming down and then picking back up and coming back down again just there. <laughs> And that's allotment hearing for you. It certainly is. <laughs> Thank it you certainly. so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. So we're here on plot 286 B and C with Paula. And we're going to find out the real story behind allotments because you haven't had a good day, have you? No, I've um, found that um, I came yesterday and um, my, my broccoli was all covered in caterpillars. Oh. And I don't like killing them either. Yeah. You're learning all the time, really. Mm. Allotment law. I'll know for next year uh, that I need to. You need to net the broccoli uh -huh. always, but you also need to give it a lot of space because the the cabbage white butterflies they they can if if the plant is pressing against the netting, um, then the cabbage whites are, they're really. Um, that they're real hunters uh -huh. and they will find a way, you know, to they'll they'll lay the eggs through the netting. Uh -huh. <coughs> which is what happened. Oh. Um, so we just had to <coughs> make a bigger, you know, bigger mm -hmm. space for the broccoli. So can you if save the broccoli? Yeah. I'm not sure. Not it's sure. sort of hanging in the balance. Uh, and so you're passing knowledge with other allotment holders? Yeah. To learn how to prepare yeah. differently in the future, yes, I guess. You do, yeah. you learn a lot. This is only my second year, so... Uh -huh. And what have you had the most success with um, last year and this year so far? I had a great success with chard. OK, That nice. was going all through the summer and uh -huh. it was really hot summer, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But I learned oh, so that... so it didn't bolt? No, no, it's very robust, uh -huh. I discovered. I was, I was watering it loads, but in actual fact it only needs watering every uh -huh. week. Cool. Right. And how did you use it in the kitchen? Because... I get in the kitchen, a bunch of chard. I'm not sure what to do apart from a stir fry. Uh, well, you can use it for anything that you uh -huh. would use spinach for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just boiling, maybe braising, kind of frying with a little things. butter. Yeah. yeah. My you grandma could... made a cheese and chard pie once, actually. Yeah, delicious. lovely. I put it in smoothies. Oh, okay. Really? For a really healthy smoothie. Oh. And it doesn't affect the flavour too much? No. no. No, not too bad. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Thank you. And of course now, it's starting to rain, good thing or bad thing? <laughs> oh, um, it depends if you're down here working, I guess. Yeah, good thing, good thing. I mean, it was just a better year this year. Uh -huh. More easy, but not so much sun. I really mm -hmm. like growing the sweet corn. Mm -hmm. I really find them really sort of spectacular to okay. grow, and they sort of, they get the tassels. They, yeah. They, I think they're beautiful things. I used to grow it when I was a kid, but I found it difficult to tell the right time to harvest it. And I was always yeah. too soon, but maybe I was just... No, I missed it. I got... Yeah. That's another thing you learn. Yeah. You have to not go away. <laughs> yeah, true. True, actually. Because um, I just went away in September when the uh -huh. sweet corn came, uh -huh. so the rats got it. But, ah, um, so you missed out. So you're either missing it or you got a glut. <laughs> yeah. That's the world of yeah. allotments, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Paula. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now I'm here with Ninny, who's got the most beautiful allotment. The dahlias are so gorgeous. And how long have you been here for? I've been here since uh, last January. Okay. And uh, it was a pretty bare plot. Yeah. And um, yeah, after about, well, nearly two years of work, it's uh, pretty fruitful this year. It, get, it gets there. And sometimes when new people take on allotments, it can be really overwhelming, can't it? Because they're generally really overgrown. So we say last year, not much happened. This year, a lot's mm -hmm. happened. So yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's a... You can see it's a part-time job, essentially. Wow. When you took the plot over, like, were you already into gardening or was it something you just decided to do? I've always been interested. There's a programme called the Victorian Kitchen Garden back in the late 80s that I was fascinated by mm -hmm. as a kid. And I love Victorian Kitchen Gardens and Georgian Kitchen Gardens. So, and I'm also chef, so to be honest, it just works well for me. Uh -huh. So all so what you're growing, you so can it's eat. it's all about Sorry. seed to plate, basically. I worked backwards and I looked saw stuff that is not that easily available yeah, in the shops yeah. and it's all about getting better quality rather than quantity. I'm half Japanese so I've got a lot of Japanese vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know you can't get better from mm -hmm. cutting your own veg in the yeah. afternoon and eating it in the evening so yeah, yeah. and cutting flowers in the morning and taking them home so it's all about just quality basically and it's quality of life. 
it's not just about growing stuff. That's so it's cool. It's more about mm. you know mental health. Um, also, just being outside. Very few places in Norwich you get a full horizon. Mm -hmm. You know, so getting your vitamin D, uh, just exercise. It's it's all just brilliant for people. Basically, oh, yeah. that that you've just literally summed up everything yeah. in just those few sentences. But I'm really excited to hear what you've got growing here. So, what kind of stuff have you got going on? Okay, I've got everything from probably about nearly 10 varieties of tomatoes to Swiss chards, new potatoes, so you've got Anya potatoes and shallots, uh, had lots of rhubarb, I've yeah. got a lot of Japanese pumpkins at the moment, uh -huh. so they're all in there, and some yeah. in there, I've got sweet corn on the go, cucumbers, calabrese broccoli, uh -huh. sprouting broccoli, kales, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, yeah, it's pretty productive. It's amazing uh -huh. how much you can fit into this kind of space, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and we only started with half a plot, so. Yeah. And how do your allotment neighbours kind of, you know, because you haven't got the same colour hair as them. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you get my drift. Yeah, of course. Well, the average age is a little bit older than myself. Yeah. But, you know, with age comes knowledge. Yeah. So you've got a wealth yeah, of people respect surrounding their knowledge, you. Yeah. And it's a lovely community. Yeah. And you interact with people you don't necessarily yeah. interact with. In the, um, in normal life, like John, who's next to me, he used to have this plot. Yeah. So I can ask him anything about what uh -huh. used to be grown here. So for crop rotation, that's really useful. Or just mm -hmm. any, you know, he's been growing. He's I think in his late seventies. He's mm. been growing since he was like thirteen. Mm. So he's got all of that, he's knowledge. All that cool. knowledge. So you just, oh. you know, you have the internet, you have books, but there's nothing better than speaking to people about actually done it. Oh, and especially yeah. people. And on this land. And well. on this land yeah. as well, because every spot is unique. Yeah. Um, so no, it's great. It's a, it's a wonderful community to, to be involved in. Next up, we're going to plant up a container that requires zero water. Sounds pretty good, huh? It's time to get tough. We've got a range of outdoor hardy succulents that won't need any water throughout the summer and they'll live year after year. What could be easier? This is perfect for any lazy it gardeners out like there. It. Yeah. Or, well, gardeners like me, really. Well, and me a bit as yeah. well, you know, well, when you don't have much time. Busy lives, you need succulents, easy to care for. You've seen them really popular as indoor house plants, but yeah. did you know there's ones you can grow in your garden or in your patio pots? Exciting. So, we're going to plant some up, aren't we? We are. Yes. Uh, compost first. What yes. kind of compost do we need for these kind of plants? Well, because these are succulents, they really grow in very dry conditions. So they've got these fleshy leaves, so they actually store a lot of their own water. So drainage, really sharp drainage and dry soil is the key to success. So your compost will need to have some extra sharp sand or grit mixed into that when you plant up. Again, the drainage will be key at the bottom, so make sure there's holes in the base of your container and also make sure you're using a gritty potting mix. So we're probably mixing some of this grit there and as well. And this is actually we? quite a sandy compost yeah. as well, so this should all be good. Okay. And then a little bit of grit. So just that. mix that in liberally, which is then going to help the drainage and make sure there is zero chance of waterlogging. So these are Sempervivums, so these are house leeks. They're really, really well known. Perhaps your grandma used to grow them. They used to be traditionally grown on roofs in order to protect the house from lightning storms. It was kind of a bit of an old oh, wives' wow. town. I'm not sure if it did it for real, but they were always grown on roofs because they don't actually need much root space. They're really easy to grow as well. They'll grow in almost very inhospitable conditions. So that is the type of plant we want to grow on our patios yeah, during the summer, isn't completely. it? completely. That's really cool, I never knew that. Yeah, so they're rosettes, so they're going to expand a little bit over time. We'll go with these lovely green ones. Yeah. Look at those. Look at that gorgeous lime green. Uh, and how amazing does it look, the colour with that's the really nice contrast. red colours? Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. But these are really brand new breeding of Sempervivums as well. Coming from Europe, they're called the Star Series. And they're actually nicer, brighter, different colours to the more traditional ones as well. That's cool. Do you know these are edible as well, Ellen? No. Yeah, so the, the foliage, so the little spiky kind of leaves that you see on these parts, are edible and they're kind of like a little bit astringent. They hadn't really got much flavour, but they are edible and they also have a few medicinal properties. Do they? From time to time, this you, is can, news to you me. can use them in a similar way to aloe vera, you know, kind of the little flesh to kind of soothe cuts and really? wounds as well. So, yeah, but imagine that, you could use that Should I try in a buffet I... just to dip into hummus, couldn't you? Mm. <laughs> 
accidentally, <laughs> I've gone all symmetrical again. Yeah? And like I've not, I didn't really plan that. Uh -huh. I wanted it to be a circle, but it's not quite worked out that way. But that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you could also that's like um, put a few bigger rocks in there. You could always put some figurines, make it a fairy garden. Or not? No? Well, not for me. Not but your you, style. if that's your thing, then absolutely. Uh. I think I would like to top this off with some grit as well, because I think that mm. looks really, really nice. So rather, like than around... filling, rather than filling it around the plants with soil, you can fill it with grit, which is going to help the drainage, but also it's going to be more decorative because then your yeah. plants will be surrounded by grit, which is how they grow in the wild. But also, it's going to look really cool in your outdoor space. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Okay, we're nearly there. I'm just going to put a couple in these cool. corners and then... Can you fit one more? <laughs> I can fit one more in, look. There you go. So you're going to fill in now with I'm that fresh grit, I'm going to put this lovely grit in round the edges, just like, you know, cover, and then cover up the soil a little bit. I think it gives it a little mm -hmm. bit of an extra dynamic as well. You could pick any kind of colour, couldn't you? Oh, you could have some of the, like, gemstone grit from the 90s, couldn't you? You could, yeah. actually. Do you know what? I think that would be ultra yeah. trendy now to do really that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Should we nice. give it a water? Yeah, sure. It's okay to get all the water all over them. Yeah, in that because way? obviously, like in the wild, they get the rain on them from time to time. As long as the water doesn't sit in the centre, yeah, that's great. But nature is clever, so it doesn't let that happen. But if you need to, just knock the gravel off a little bit. Just do it very carefully. But plants are remarkably resilient because in the wild, from time to time, they might end up being below you know, a few pieces of gravel, etc. And what kind of temperature are these hardy to then? Oh, these are hardy down to minus 20, even really? more than that. Really? Yeah. That's fabulous. Because when you look at these, you wouldn't think so. And often, these are sold with the house plants in, I a, know, in a garden centre. I know, it's very center. misleading. So that is really misleading. You know, you don't... You know, somebody who, you know, a beginner gardener would assume that these can only be grown indoors, mm. but that's not the case. That's why you always need to check a few different sources, make sure you're buying from really good sources for these plants too. And obviously look online, get some good information, follow people like us as well, who can hopefully advise you the best way to grow those that's plants. That's super pretty. There you I go. like this a lot. Hey. Funky, trendy, very cool. And that's probably the only time this summer I'll need to water it as well because that is a okay. drought tolerant, hardy, succulent container which is basically going to look after itself as well. Good work. You just wait till Again. it flowers. Boom. It's going to give you a big surprise. Oh. <laughs>Next up, we've got more houseplant chat and some great plants which will tolerate the darker areas of your home. Welcome to our jungle kitchen. We are about to have a bit of houseplant chit chat because I'm actually here with a houseplant obsessive. <laughs> How many houseplants do you have in total in the house? There's somewhere around about 150. What? Yeah, I know. You're jerking my gherkin. <laughs> what? <laughs> 150 in the house. We've yeah. grouped together about 20 of those here yeah. in order to show people the range of different house plants, <laughs> give you a few quick kind of how-to tips as well, look at a few oddities and basically kind of natter on about house plants. Yeah, now, exactly. where are the bourbons? The bourbons? I want a biscuit. You just had a biscuit. Oh my gosh, you uh, don't stop eating. So what have you got here then? Give us a tour. This is just two a different few. rooms almost. Yeah, well, we've kind we? of got these lovely foliage, shade loving or indirect loving plants, mm -hmm. uh, light plants, and these ones are kind of cactus and uh, mm -hmm. succulents. So, so for your light room, for your dark room. Yeah, and then we've got some kind of crazy funky stuff going on here <laughs> yeah. as well. I like the odd Explain kind of Explain that to us, Ellen Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're going to think of this. It's um, like a mermaid. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure what I think of this, mm -hmm. but it is an air plant, so Tillandsia, which is uh, glued into a shell, making it look like an octopus, which is quite <coughs> cool, pretty retro. Um, these kind of remind me of when I was young. Yeah. Because I can always remember having something like this in our house. Oh, when I was younger, plant, yeah. I don't know if it was an I air, air plant. plants in shells. Yeah, that yeah. might be what is reminding me. But anyway, I, I got a couple because I was really interested. And mm. um, they're hung on the outside of a door where they're getting um, indirect light. And I spritz them mm -hmm. every now and again. They don't need much at all. But I don't really know what the longevity of these really are. Yeah, I mean, this house plant trend, it's, it's kind of a bit crazy because there's a lot of almost like duff advice out there sometimes. And a lot of people yeah. creating like very new styles of things that might not have that longevity. 
Is that a bad thing because it's not horticulturally correct or is that kind of a bit of fun? And if you see this as short term, that's fine. But the danger is that people get disappointed. Exactly. Because it doesn't grow in the right way. Yeah, I think if you're new to plants and you've just Mm. picked up something like this and you're really excited about it and then it dies, Mm. you think perhaps that, you know, you're the best plant parent ever. You kill plants. I've heard that so many times before. I kill plants. Every plant I've had, (laughs) I I kill. Um, But sometimes it isn't your fault. It is the plant that you've, you've purchased mm. or, you know, Yeah, it's style. kind of almost like um, destined to fail sometimes. Yeah. Or sorry to yeah. be a little bit negative. But ultimately, that plant wants to grow this way up. Yeah. Because that's how it grows in yeah. the rainforest attached to trees. Sometimes it might be on the side, but usually not upside down. So it will be interesting to see how these develop. Yeah. Edel and Mary. They're a little bit of fun. We'll see what yeah. happens with okay. those ones. That's so what else we got. What's this little boy here? Because oh, look at that. He looks a bit leafy and green, but he's on the lighter room side. So this is a plant that likes full sun. Yeah. And what does it do? Because it's carnivorous. It's got a sticky pads. It, these tiny, tiny little hairs on the foliage capture tiny, tiny little flies. Mm-hmm. And there's quite a lot on here. And I actually placed this next to some plants near my back door that had those horrible house oh plant my gosh, yeah. Um And mm-hmm. they're full of the little gnats from the soil. So that's pretty cool. It's caught quite a lot of them. Because it catches them and then you can see it rolls up and almost like chews them up. Yeah, it's really (laughs) clever, isn't it? Carnivorous plants are, not only do they look amazing, but they can be really useful. Mm -hmm. Actually, interestingly, I spoke to somebody about um, having them outside. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, goodness, what are the tall carnivorous plants called? Yeah, Saracenias. Saracenias. A lot of those are hardy. They are very hardy and I spoke to a specialist about those Mm -hmm. and he just said, no, they should be grown outside and it's another plant actually that you buy in the garden center which is placed near the house plant so you think that it has to be grown Mm. inside but many of them should be grown outside and they actually need cold weather over the winter time Mm. however they aren't discriminate about who and what they eat so Mm. bees could be caught Mm. and he gave me a tip and he said if you get a straw and you place a straw through a piece of cotton wool and then you put that into the top Mm -hmm. yeah it's the straw is too small for a bee to get caught. Okay, whoa. There you go. Because um, obviously like this type, this is sun juice, it's got those sticky pads and that's going to capture your little aphids, little flies. It's almost like a living kind of sticky paper that yeah, you could use is. in a greenhouse yeah, yeah. perhaps. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many it can eat. Do you know what I mean? I guess mean, with I this, don't... it kind of captures them and they can't get away. So whether it rolls up and digests them or not, it's up to the plant, isn't it, then? But it is interesting to have sundew, also Venus flytrap as yeah. well. And they're obviously capturing the insects to make up for poor mineral soils that they grow on in the wild. Really easy to grow house plant because they love a rich, sunny windowsill. But they also need to be topped up with water at all times. So yeah. they want to sit in basically a little yeah. pond of water. Yeah, they sit sure in a tray Always water. topped up. Yeah. yeah, Love them and, you know, they're great for kids as well. Yeah, totally. So, what else? What else? What oh, foliage so plants have you much, got? So much. Uh, this begonia. Yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the mm. colours. Like, this is foliage. Foliage isn't just green. Not that there's anything more green, mm. it's actually my favourite colour. But look at that. Isn't nature's like an artist? I know. And Don't a lot of think? these plants are great for slightly darker rooms as well because a lot of these originate like on the rainforest floor. So they're used to kind of clawing up, trying to find that light and just having little beams of light through the day. So they're great for those yeah. slightly more shady rooms away from the window as well. And this begonia rex, as you say, is beautiful. Isn't it just gorgeous? Do you know how to propagate it though? Because I tried when I was a kid and it didn't work. It's a bit the leaf of a cutting. weird root, isn't it? You just yeah. chop it. You are meant to just take a leaf and basically with a really sharp knife Uh chop it and then place it into some really gritty soil. Mm -hmm. I've tried it not with a begonia but with streptocarpus Mm -hmm. and it didn't work for me. Uh Because you cut it into little squares but you have to make sure the main stem is You need some of that that. main stem so that will root. Um, But I've only tried it the couple of times and it Mm -hmm. didn't work for me. Let us know if you've tried that and it has indeed worked for you. 
This, um, I remember my grandma growing these when I was a kid as well, Begonia Rex. Yeah. Beautiful. And there's some new varieties oh, that you can so grow many. outside as well as yeah. inside too. There's some too. really lovely ones available. Super. So they're great. Um, mm -hmm. I think I have to talk about the... Did you steal Monstera. that? Because these are always in big demand. They are, How did you get they? that? Did this you trade it? This is a cutting of my big Monstera monkey mask. Ooh. Monkey face. Monkey mask. Um, yeah, look at that. Isn't that fabulous? So it's easy to take the cutting? So, yeah. so easy. Yeah. Took the cutting, put it in a little um, glass of water, mm -hmm. let it root. Get, I allowed some really good strong roots to grow and then I potted it. Mm. That was it. Like you keep changing the water, make sure it's fresh water. <laughs> it's so cool, there you go. It? So another plant, I love propagating. Yeah, and another one for the rainforest, it has the holes in the leaves that let more light through the plant to then get to the leaves below as well. Nature's incredible, oh, isn't it's it? Beautiful. Look it's beautiful. It's one of those plants I can't stop staring at sometimes, isn't it? Another one actually that <laughs> takes you back to being younger yeah. because they were really fashionable, weren't they, years oh, back? And definitely. they've come back around again. Cool. What else have we got? What, well, what we got um, we've got a few outside? cool things behind us actually yeah. because this let's grab that one actually yeah this one seems to have gone to bed <laughs> <laughs> it's closed itself up this is oxalis yes. uh triangularis it is. is that right yeah and why, why is it closed up like this then because it hasn't got any light on it at the moment so uh -huh. as soon as it gets some sunlight it actually sits on a windowsill in the afternoon the sun comes around and those beautiful gorgeous ready purpley leaves open up and they look absolutely stunning. You know what? This has flowered on and on and on for months yeah. and months as well. But I love the leaf structure and how it's just obviously just collapsed. Yeah. It's just like, like just that. A little to butterfly. Sleep. And yeah. it's very easy for people to think that, you know, it's dry or it's um, not uh. very well, but that's not the case. It's one of those plants that closes up in um, shade and then opens up in sun. Because there's also, oh. It's gorgeous. I think we have a Maranta here as well somewhere which is another plant that closes up at night yeah. and you t tend to think oh it needs water but no don't just calm down yeah <laughs> calm down yeah. calm down don't worry that's the I prayer think, plant know, isn't it the yeah, Maranta the prayer, the prayer plant. plant so when the leaves close up it's like mm. prayers and then it opens uh, of course, up yeah. So yeah, it's a really lovely plant. You got your pancake plant here as well, haven't you? The pancake cool plant is ace, yeah. isn't it? Another really trendy plant. Look at those leaves. This is very happy sitting in indirect light. But it's almost become a cult figure as well, hasn't it? Has. It, this it's one? trendy, yeah. isn't it? Really <laughs> trendy, but it grows really well. It doesn't need a great amount of water. It's a lovely plant to grow. And You've got a baby. <laughs> a really easy plant to propagate as well. Uh -huh. It produces tiny little babies, usually around the edge of the pot, and you just take them out and pop pop them in sure. some soil and now you've got another one. Mm -hmm. Special note as well on the shelf behind is the pothos. If you're looking for a good kind of shelf plant yeah. in a dark room, then pothos is really, really it useful because again, yeah. it grows on the rainforest floor. They use that a lot, just growing like in shops, in pots and in bathrooms in Asia, actually. Okay. Like well. when you go to the Menjurinals, there's often little pots of pothos all around. Really? Because they believe in that air purification in that well, situation. Good. But also yeah. it's a plant that doesn't need any light. So I you can, can have it in a room with no windows. I bet you do need air purification yeah. in men's toilet to be fair. <laughs> And you've got a plant at the front there, which is kind of indoor, outdoor. You've got the ivy there. How does that perform as a house plant? The ivy is a brilliant house plant. Mm. Not only do you get those lovely trailing stems so you can put it on shelves, it doesn't need a great deal of light. It doesn't need much water. It's just so easy to mm. grow. So I love having an ivy. I have a couple of ivies. I don't have loads of them, but I think they're really cool. Mm. You get lots of variegated foliage as well. There's lots of different types. I love it. That's I know cool. it's a bit of a love-hate. Some people really don't like ivy, but it's a good one for me. Mm. It's a good doer. It's good for beginners, it's a good, isn't it's it? It's a good doer. Yeah. It's good for beginners, yeah. And you got, I see you got your calafia there, your yeah, network, network, your china doll plant. China now, doll. those two plants, to me, uh, they look nice, but they can be divas because they don't like to be too wet, too dry. They don't like drafts as well. So kind of just, you've got to take a little bit of care with those ones. You, you do. So perhaps if you're a beginner, they're not the first one to mm -hmm. start with, but don't be scared of it. Because actually when I was, when I got the china doll plant, mm. I mean, look, at it, it's so pretty. Yeah. Um, the shop person said to me, you know, it's a bit of a diva, good luck growing that. Uh, and I thought, hmm, okay. And I actually came away and I posted a photograph of it on social media and somebody said, it's fine, it's not a diva. Mm. All you need to do is make sure you keep its toes wet. Uh-huh, okay. So, so now, how do you do that? I never let it 100% dry out, mm -hmm. but it does get drier. 
and then I water it, but I just allow some water to rest in the pot uh -huh. at the bottom. So you water it from below, which no, is... No, I water it from above, okay. but I let the little bit of water filter mm -hmm. through into the pot, and then I let it sit there. Mm -hmm. And keep an eye on it. It usually takes a few days for that then to be absorbed, and then I don't have to water it again for okay. maybe another two weeks. And this sits in indirect. It's a bright room, but it's oh. indirect sunlight. Oh. And it's. I've had this now for well over a year, maybe 18 months, oh. and it's doing lovely. And again, the way you're treating that is to simulate the natural conditions that yeah. it would be putting up and That's what in you have wild. to remember, isn't yeah, it, really? Yeah. Think about how the plant would grow in the wild. But yeah, I'm really happy with this, because it was the one I was worried about. I was just thinking, oh, they've mm. said that I'm never going to keep that alive. <laughs> and I have. That's cool, well done. <laughs> We hope you've enjoyed the first plant-based TV show and have been inspired by the fantastic and fun world of plants. Until next time, keep liking and sharing this video to help us grow our audience. Oh, I'm off for a plant-based adult drink. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I've always wanted to read the news. I'd be like Becky Jago on Look East or ITV exactly. Anglia. National Norwich. One of those. <laughs> oh, okay, so, or I could be like. I always tell you, National Norwich. <laughs> like Hugh Edwards. Okay, so three, two, one. Okay, Alan, I'm honoured to. What am I doing? Whatever you <laughs> so like. I had something in my head. <laughs> I'm honoured to award you the first Marigold Medal as the winner of the inaugural Allotment Games. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, I'm honoured to award you the Marigold Medal as the winner of the first inaugural Allotment <laughs> Games. And another pot full of succulents. <laughs> Sorry, I took way too long to say that. I forgot what we were going to put up. I had to look. Yes, I was like, what Alan, I'm honoured to award you a big beep in the background. <laughs> Alan, I am honoured to award you the first Marigold Medal. <laughs> Welcome to the Plant Based Podcast, a TV programme. Oh, I said the podcast. That's all right. I said Plant Based Podcast. No, no, but I thought we were just rehearsing anyway. Alan, I am honoured to award you the first, not the first Marigold Medal. Well, it is actually probably. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, I'm honoured to award you this Marigold Medal as the winner of the inaugural. <laughs> I'll get my coat. <laughs> Welcome to Plant Based TV, a programme made just for you about the world of plants. That's right, it's the wider no. What? <laughs> I think you stole my line. No, I, think I didn't. You stole my first line. No? So, gardening tips and tricks, but also plant based diets and plant based clothing as well. Plant based? <laughs> That would have got past. <laughs> that is very true. I don't know if I told you guys about the Game Changers movie that comes out on the 16th of September. Of so um, yeah, it's just showing how you know plants can be optimal for sports performance, but not only performance in the gym or whatever, but yeah. also in the bed they found out. Ooh. So they had these athletes. <laughs> you like this? You like this? They gave these athletes one night. They gave them beef burritos. And they're measuring the frequency and firmness of nighttime erections with a mm -hmm. special light -like device. First night bean burritos, second night beef burritos. And the difference between the two, they found eating the vegan food before bed, they had between 13 and 15 percent firmer erections, okay, wow. and it actually lasted around 300 to over 500 percent longer. That's the massive. doctor there had a real wry grin when he did it with the news and he said this is this is good news for people with penises or that enjoy penises. My husband's vegan. <laughs> you lucky girl. Boom. Oh, baby, what? Boom. <laughs> oh, and that rash I've got. <laughs> I told you, I gave you some cream for that last yeah, night. Didn't you put it on? Bye -bye. It's a programme made by people who love plants. For you, people that love plants. That's all for the plant-based news today. Join us next time for more about the magical world of plants. <laughs> so cool. Oh. That is funny. Oh. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed the first plant-based TV show. And you've had an insight into the fascinating world of plants. <laughs>
<laughs> and we, I hope, we hope we've inspired you to f*** these What the hell's a glut? You're going to find out soon. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you don't put this in the bloopers. Wah, wah. You're not even told for f***. <laughs> <laughs>